So the easiest and most epic way to play all of our favourite retro games is using an incredible free app called Emudeck for Windows, which greatly simplifies downloading and configuring all of the best emulators we'll ever need to get it in a slick user interface. So here are the 8 simple steps to get our Emudeck for Windows set up on our Ally X, which of course also works with the original Ally and indeed any Windows based handheld. Plus I'll share 5 tips to get the most out of Emudeck. So let's dive straight in and for step 1 is to download Emudeck. So let's open our favourite web browser on the Ally which in my case is Brave and let's head to the official Emudeck website which is emudeck.com, link in the doodat below. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom, click on the Windows option and we can download this completely free which is awesome as last year in my Emudeck tutorial it was still in beta so we had to pay for it. Or we can join the Patreon if we want, advanced features like Cloud Sync, early access to new features and so on. Not to mention to support these awesome Emudeck developers. I'm going to select download for free for the time being and I will join Patreon later and select where we want to download to which in my case is the downloads folder. Next for step 2 let's install Emudeck. So just head to the folder where we downloaded it, which in my case is downloads, double click to run it. You may get this slow DNS detected message like I did so just click yes. In this Windows PowerShell message, click yes. In the Git for Windows message, click yes. I would recommend making sure we're plugged into the charge by the way, just to be on the safe side. It just takes a few minutes while everything installs and we only need to do it this first time. For step three, we now need to configure Emudeck as this easy or custom message pops up towards the end of installation. We can choose easy mode and customize options later, but let's select custom mode to walk through each step in this together and get all the emulators exactly how we want them. Next, let's select what drive we'd like our ROM directory to be on. And now with the Ally X's SD card working perfectly from all accounts, I'm going to select this. Next, let's select our device. Currently, the Ally X for us early adopters isn't available yet, but of course, the OG RG Ally is perfectly fine, so let's select this. Now select every emulator we want to be installed and configured. I'm going to add MAME which are arcade machines so let's click the blue MAME button. The Dreamcast emulator called Flycast so let's press the blue Flycast button. And finally MGBA for Game Boy Advance games so let's press the blue MGBA button. Next is emulator and tools configurations. I'm going to leave all selected and also add Ryojinx which is a fantastic alternative switch emulator to Yuzu which I've also done a tutorial about here on the channel. And I'm also going to remove Pegasus for a reason I'll explain in a moment. And now we can just press continue. Next I would highly recommend setting autosave to on for these specific retro emulators like Game Boy and SNES which autosaves when we exit our games which is super convenient. If you want to enable retro achievements which add a nice modern twist to retro games then you can log into your account right here and it is highly recommended and you should get this success pop up if you've correctly logged in. These next options are all what you personally prefer as a gamer. For me I'm going to select game bezels to on for even more of a nice retro feel for these older systems, 4x3 for classic Sega systems and also 4x3 aspect ratio for classic Nintendo. I'm going to select the wider 16x9 aspect ratio for Dreamcast and N64 games and on the next screen also for GameCube games too. I'm going to turn LCD shader to on for these four classic handheld retro systems. We can keep these off if you don't truly want to create the old retro look feel. Next I'm going to put the CRT shader to on as it brings back memories for me of those old school TVs I had as a kid. And I'll also choose the CRT shader to be on for classic 3D games on these systems. Remember that we can always change these settings later on so we don't need to stress about this at all. Now select the front end and what we'll launch our retro games with. I'll just leave all of these two on. Ok pause for a minute, I do not recommend selecting the Pegasus front end as after an hour and a half of installation it just seemed to get held up on this Pegasus front end section. So let's deselect the Pegasus option and press continue. Ok back to it, now select the theme of the interface, Electful is nice and clean but my absolute favourite is Artflix, I highly recommend this. Emulator resolution is next, PS1, PS2, Gamecube and Wii are all on 1080p by default which is great, but let's change Wii U from 720 to 1080p and PS3 also from 720 to 1080p. DS and 3DS default is already at 1080p which is great and click next. This overview screen will display all the configurations we've selected so if we're happy with all of this then click finish to begin the installation and this is where the magic happens as Emudeck now saves us many hours 
by downloading and configuring all of the emulators. Yes! I don't know about you, but while we'll wait, I think now is a perfect time for a pancake intermission. Okay, so we're near the end of installation and we get this message reminding us that we need to add games to the Steam ROM manager that we'll get to shortly, otherwise controls won't work. So let's click next. Next, we'll get this copy our game screen. Let's click manual copy. Then this blue open emulation folder button. We'll talk about getting games which are called ROMs in emulation terms in just a moment. So just click close for now, then next. We want to launch our games with the fantastic emulation station app. So let's click this. On this screen, let's click the blue launch Steam ROM manager button. This screen tells us our emulation hotkeys that I'll mention more in the tip section in a moment. Okay, so this first time we launch Steam ROM manager, we get this welcome screen. Click choose to select our Steam account, which should automatically show up here if we have already opened and logged into our Steam account in the Steam app within Armory Crates right here. Again, we'll talk more about Steam ROM manager in a moment. So for the time being, let's click on add games, click pass click save to steam, then click the X to exit. Installation of Emudeck is now fully complete. And remember, we only need to do this this one time. So let's close out by pressing X. We can get back into Emudeck to change settings in two ways. Either press start, go to all apps, scroll down, then click on the Emudeck app right here. Or we can of course simply press on the shortcut, which is the easiest and what I do. I do want to highlight key settings in Emudeck quickly. The first is quick settings, so at any time we can change autosave, bezels and so on. In fact, right now I'm going to change the LCD effect on handhelds to off to make the screen more vibrant. Next is manage emulators. Keep an eye on this regularly as if any emulators have an orange notification on it, then it means that an update is ready and definitely worth doing. We open Steam ROM Manager here, again we'll come on to this next. The screen resolution options are here if we ever need to change anything for any reason. Retro achievements are here if we haven't logged in yet. BIOS check is one of the most helpful tools here and we'll cover this in a moment. Cloud saves are near the bottom to sync between devices if we are a Patreon member, or we can just back up our games to the cloud here. The get early access button brings up their Patreon if you'd like to join it. And the final option is we can uninstall Emidec if we ever need to. With Emudeck now installed and configured, and we now know how to access its settings, we now need to get our retro games, which in emulation terms are called ROMs for step four. Let's open up our favorite web browser. Again, in my case is Brave, which is especially great for this. Now as YouTubers, as I'm sure you're aware, I can't tell you exactly where to get ROMs from, but if we type in the name of the game, like in this example is Barbie, which is a classic, then the name of the retro system like SNES, then the word ROM like this, then I'm sure that you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Hey, that rhymes. Something else that may help is, you know what? I just love how the internet is like a huge archive. Hmm. When we've downloaded a ROM like this, let's extract it, cut or copy it, then open the drive where we installed Emidec on, which in my case is the SD cards to the D drive, open the emulation folder, open the ROMs folder, and now we can start putting our games in here, which remember in emulation terms are called ROMs into the correct folders. So for example, Game Boy Advance games go into this GBA folder, GameCube into this GC folder and so on. So let's open up our SNES folder right here and simply paste the ROM into this correct system folder. Next for step five is BIOS. Let's open up Emudeck, scroll down on the left hand side to the excellent tool called BIOS Checker, and this will all be red if your BIOS is missing for the more modern emulators like PS1 and 2, Switch, Sega CD, Saturn, Nintendo DS and Dreamcast. Let's open up our favourite web browser. Again, us YouTubers can't tell you exactly where and guys, so many gamers new to this get so freaked out about this regarding BIOS, but it really is very simple. We just Google search the name of the system and the word BIOS. That's it. It really is that simple. So here I've downloaded the three PS1 BIOS files called SCPH5500, 5501 and 5502. Let's cut them from the downloads folder, go to where we downloaded Emudeck into the emulation folder, then the BIOS folder, simply paste them into here just like you can see here, go back into our Emudeck settings, click off the BIOS checker, then back onto it to refresh it. And yes, the PS1 BIOS has now been detected and is now green. 
If this is your first ever time doing this, then just find the BIOS for each system, which does take a little bit of time. But if you've upgraded to the Ally X from the original Ally like I did, then I've done a recent guide on backing up our old emulation folders, and this is so easy. And that would just simply copy our entire BIOS folder into our newly created emulation folder. So now when we go back into the BIOS checker, this should all be a beautiful shade of green. So now that our ROMs and BIOS are in the correct folders, for step six, let's now look at Steam ROM Manager. Make sure that Steam is completely closed by looking in our tray, tapping on Steam, then tap on Exit Steam. Then let's launch Emidec by clicking on the shortcut and head to Steam ROM Manager in the middle on the left. Passes allow us to toggle which emulators and games we want to add to our Steam library. Just make sure we toggle Emulation Station 2 on, then click Add Games. Click Pass to scan all the ROMs in our library, click Save to Steam, wait for the Done message to appear, then close Steam ROM Manager. And remember that we have to do this every time we add a new ROM to its correct system folder, otherwise this message stated in the installation that controls and hotkeys won't work. For step 7 let's launch, select a theme and scrape artwork in Emulation Station. By clicking on the Start menu, go to All Apps, scroll down to this new Emidec folder, and inside is the Emulation Station app, so let's click on it. The first time you may get this message, so quit and restart. If you get this message saying no game files were found, then click on Change ROM Directory. And this is simple, we just type in where our ROMs are, which in my case is on the SD card in the D drive. And of course in the Emulation, then the ROMs folder, and we may need to restart. Remember that Emidec is the back end where we change our settings and all the behind the scenes stuff like BIOS Checker, and this Emulation Station app is the awesome front end where we can access all of our favorite systems and games in one convenient place. Let's change the theme by pressing Start, then UI Settings, then Theme Downloader. Select any you like here, but as I say, my absolute favorite is Artflix, so let's download that. So now go to Theme, scroll across to Artflix to select this, and now we have this absolutely gorgeous theme that displays all of our systems in an incredible way. All of our ROMs are categorized by each system, and to scrape artwork for our ROMs, hit the menu button, click Scraper, click on Scrape at these systems, go down to Select All, and press Start. And if we have a lot of ROMs, then this may take a while, but afterwards we have this just truly jaw-dropping presentation that includes box art, description, game logo, and background for each game. And for the final step eight, let's go to Armory Crate, Press the select button, go to add game slash apt library, press the LB button to bring up file explorer and go to where the emulation station.exe file is, which for me was in users, then emidec folder, emulation station de folder, and it's right here called es-de.exe. So when we select this, it should appear with a tick, click done, and our front end emulation station now appears. Let's add customized game artwork by going to the amazing website steamgriddb.com, start typing in Emulation Station, find a horizontal artwork we like, I'm going to select this one so just tap on it, press download, hold on it, then select save as and just save to desktop. Back in Army Crate, let's press the X button, go to game info, press select game art, click on add, select our new pick on the desktop, Select this and press done. Then edit game art, stretch it how we want it, press save, and this now looks much better. And finally, let's head into set game profile, go to configuration, and just select the operator mode on battery that we want. So if you play more demanding retro games, you may want to set this higher, but I'll be mainly doing stuff like SNES and GameCube, so I'm gonna set this to silent. Congratulations! Your Ally X, original Ally or Windows handheld is now fully set up for retro gaming. And if this helped you, then hit like and comment so the YouTube algorithm can spread this to more in our amazing Windows PC handheld gaming community. And if you've ever enjoyed a vid right here on the channel, then to get subscribed, as whopping 93% of you amazing viewers aren't yet. So help us achieve our goal to get this down to 50% by the end of the year. Thanks so much. And as promised, here are five quick tips. Number one is to always make sure gamepad is selected in control mode, otherwise controls won't work. Tip two is to save mid-game, just press select and RB together at the same time. Tip three is to load a save state, just press select and LB together at the same time. 
Tip 4 to quickly exit out of a game, just press select and start buttons at the same time. And tip 5 if you add single ROMs you don't need to scrape everything again, just press start. If screen scraper didn't get the artwork, then select the games DB. In scrape these games just select no metadata. Select the system and just the artwork for these new or missing games will be scraped. I'd love to hear what are the first few retro games that you play with Emidec for Windows. Also let us know if there are any specific tips and settings that you recommend for Emidec in the comments below. And as a little extra bonus watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. There's so much pain in this world. Be the reason people still believe in good people. Wow, there really is so much turmoil in the world, like here in the UK these past few days with violent clashes on the streets. But let's choose to be kind, to respect others and to bring positivity. So stay encouraged today guys. And check this video out if you want to find out 14 essential steps to optimise your Ally X or Original Ally. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.